Will you pray with me? God of grace, we've been on a week-long sprint preparing for Thanksgiving, celebrating it together and then for many folks immediately rushing into a, a new season. And as we heard Jen encourage us to cultivate that gift of waiting, we ask that you quiet our spirits, open our hearts, Make us present to your presence this morning. Amen. So, Carl just read a scripture for us that may seem a little ill-fitted to our moment. It's a story about uh, Passover. Passover is a celebration that typically happens in the springtime. And at least in the Christian imagination, we... we connected to the celebration of Easter, which is when new life emerges after the cold, dead winter. And yet here we are just getting ready to enter into the winter season. And it might seem a little ill-fitted to us because uh, we just ate our way through Thanksgiving. And we just shopped our way into the Advent season. And, and, and we're reading a story about springtime. And, it, and it's a story about springtime. And we just had Denver, who had their worst November snow in 25 years. And, and 100 miles of the five was closed because of ice and snow. And it just seems like an ill-fitted story to read something about springtime here as we're entering winter. But I want to invite you to look at the story a little bit differently than that. It is a story that's about meal preparation. We've all been part of that this week. It's a story about making accommodations ready. Many of us have either been guests or hosted guests this week. It's a story about um, the difficulty of finding a place and, and we've seen a lot of that this week with travelers who have been stranded by bad weather and so forth. And, but most importantly, it's a story about the Christ in a way that we have been systematically taught to ignore. And that is, Jesus once summed up his life, that the foxes have holes, birds of the air have their nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. And it, it, it's that quality of, of, of striving for a place that we've never really paid enough attention to in the life of Christ. And in Luke's gospel, he even gets it started with that little throwaway line that we always hear in the Christmas story where they laid the baby swaddled in a manger because there was no room for them in the end. So throughout this Advent season, we're going to attend to what it means to await and prepare for the one for whom there was no place to lay his head. And we've gotten started this morning with two different stories about Jesus and location. The first one Eric read for us. And it was a story that, that takes place when Jesus is just starting to turn his journey from Galilee to Judea. And this is a significant moment in Luke's gospel because Jesus tells the disciples that he's going down to Judea. So Galilee is where Nazareth was, where Jesus grew up, where most of his ministry was. And Judea is that southern region where Jerusalem is. And Jesus has just told his disciples that he's going to Jerusalem to be rejected, to suffer, to die, and on the third day to rise. And in order to get from northern area of Galilee to the southern area of Judea, you have to go through this area called Samaria. And if you know anything about first century Palestine, you know that the Samaritans and the Jews, they just had uh, strained relationships. And so as Eric read the story for us, I, I love the, the way the translation we have picks up on this language very literally. Jesus set his face to go to Jerusalem. And in the next verse, uh, it's not translated as literally, but it literally says, and he sent messengers before his face, in front of his face, 
to find accommodations. And they go into a village in Samaria to find Jesus a place to stay. And the village rejects him because his face is heading toward Jerusalem. This is not a small thing. This is something that happens over and over again in the life of Jesus. And what we see in this moment is that the child we await during Advent is the Jesus who's caught up in a whole network of social prejudice and as a result cannot even stay the night in a village because of his destiny of going to Jerusalem. So the first story we read today shows how difficult it is for Jesus to find a place. And then the second story we read that Carl read for us is the story where Jesus prepares the Last Supper. And like the first story, he sends people ahead of him to prepare the accommodations. Now this is an interesting story that I believe I was taught to read wrongly my whole childhood. I was taught to read this story as a story about magic Jesus. Magic Jesus who tells James and John, now when you get to the city, I know this because I'm magic, there are going to be a man walking by carrying a vase of water. That's an unusual thing. Men didn't do that kind of work back in the day. And, uh, but magic Jesus knew it. So he said, when you get to the city, you're going to see a man carrying water, follow him. And when he goes into a house, Jesus gave them special Jedi powers. He said, go up to the owner of the house and say, the master wants a room where he can share his meal with his disciples. And the owner of the house will go, I have a room upstairs. You may use it, right? And, and I was taught to hear this as kind of this, we didn't use the word magical, we used the word miracle. Miracle Jesus story. But I want to invite you to hear it differently. Because the, te- the passage that Carl just read for us, just before it, we discover that because it was Passover, and Passover is drawing near, the chief priests and the scribes are looking for a way to arrest Jesus. And they want to do it in stealth because they're worried about the crowd because he's too, he's too popular for them to do it in open. So they're looking for a place where they can nab Jesus. And what Jesus does instead is he works out a secret place to have Passover with his disciples. So it's not magic Jesus who knows that a man's coming by. It's Jesus who has planned all of this. And this is the signal that they prearranged for these two disciples because it's only James, John, and Jesus who know where the Last Supper is going to be. And that's critical because if Judas knew, it would have been ruined by Jesus' arrest. See, this is a story full of all of this cryptic detail, not because it's magic Jesus that knows everything ahead of time, but because it's Jesus who says when they sit down to eat, I have wanted to have this meal with you. And in order for Jesus, get get this, in order for Jesus to have a peaceful last supper with his disciples, he has to make all of these little cryptic uh, arrangements so that they can meet in secret. When you put these two stories together, what they tell us is that throughout his life and ministry, It is absolutely true that the Son of Man had nowhere to lay his head. He's rejected in one place and a door is closed. In order to even have a peaceful meal with his disciples, he has to make all of these surreptitious plans with them. Because in his life and ministry, Jesus suffered what we call dislocation. There was no place that he could call his own. No place where he was safe. No place where he had the warmth and security that we all long for in a home. And that's the one we await during the season of Advent. So here's the good news of the gospel I want to share with you. Sometimes during the season of Advent, when it feels like everybody around us is joyous, and everything so kind of homey and warm, sometimes we have trouble catching up with the season because we ourselves feel dislocated. 
Some of you have lost a spouse in this last year. Or a mother, father, a child. Some of you will know what it's like to be at a table and to be so keenly aware of the empty chair at the table. Some of you are reaching a point in your life where you're losing some of the abilities you once had. And even being in the same house where you've lived forever, it's almost like being in a different place. And some of us have lost jobs. And some of us have lost dreams. And for many of us, this season of Advent can be a very difficult time of trudging forward, of smiling back, of trying to keep our hope, keep our faith, wait with patience. But the good news of the gospel is this, that when God chooses to come to us in the Christ, God comes to us as one who shares that dislocation with us and grounds us by making every place a home. So if you're somebody for whom this season of Advent is particularly difficult, if you're not looking forward to it, if you're in some ways even dreading the moments when you're supposed to put on a smile and show your joy. I want to assure you that Jesus Christ is with you in that pain and walking with you in this season. And as such, this Advent season is yours. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs>